In this video, we're going to continue our exploration of vector calculus by building on the idea of the line integral to introduce a new operation called the gradient. So suppose that you wanna calculate the amount of work that's required to bring a charge little q, it could be in point A, all the way to point B by some path gamma in the presence of an electric field E that's due to another charge, capital Q. So capital Q gives off an electric field, which is a vector field, which means that uh, every point is associated with a vector, so a magnitude and a direction. And we want to know the amount of work uh, that's required to bring this charge from here to here. So from electromagnetism, you know that the work done by an electric field on a charge little q is equal to little q times the integral of your electric field at every point along the path dotted with the differential path element uh, uh, by a differential line element. Okay, so remember what we're doing here is calculating the amount of work that needs to be done to bring the charge from here to a, a point. So from here to a point dr away over here, and you're adding up all of these contributions. One way of doing this is to introduce a new uh, concept that we typically call phi of r. And this denoted the electrostatic potential. So uh, at point R. Okay, and this is basically the potential energy per unit charge. And what you found was the work needed to be done to take a particle from point A to point B was simply the difference of this electrostatic potential at uh, the, the endpoints of your path. Okay, so the way you should think about this electrostatic potential is it describes a sort of potential energy landscape with mountains and valleys and all that. So where you have found electromagnetism was the work needed to take from point A to point B was the difference in the energy, in the potential energy at point B minus the potential energy at point A. And as an example of this, we're going to consider the following electrostatic potential. Okay, so if you plot this, elect this function in three dimensions as x and y, you get something that looks like this. So you have a potential energy well, and what looks like uh, a potential energy hill. And a common way of representing this is with this graph, which is called the contour plot. And each one of these lines represents what's called an equipotential. And all along any one of these curves are potential energy in this context is constant. So as long as you stay all along this curve, your potential energy will always be, for example, minus 0.3 volts, let's say. And you can also think of this in terms of uh, mountains and valleys. So each one of these equal potentials is you're staying at the same height at the mountain or valley. And we're going to use this idea of equipotentials to calculate how much 
our potential energy per unit charge changes when you're going from one equipotential to another. Okay, so I've sketched out roughly what the equipotential surfaces for this function looks like. So just to uh, orient you here a little bit, each one of these lines is an equipotential surface represented as a contour plot. And we wanna know how our potential energy changes when you go from one equipotential say at position R to another equipotential at R plus dr. Okay, so if we zoom in into here, we might have something like this. So we have, let's say we're over here at position r. This is one equipotential. This is another equipotential. And we wanna go over here. So we've displaced by some vector dr. All right. In other words, you want to know the work that's needed to go from this equipotential to this equipotential over here. So if we generalize what we saw above, we want to know the difference from and the potential energy at this position and the potential energy per unit charge at this position. And we saw before, there should have been a minus sign here. that this was equivalent to this line integral. Okay, so going from R to dr, you wanna find the contributions of E dotted with dr all along this path that we've chosen to take. And we're going to consider the case where these two equipotentials are extremely close together, so dr is extremely small. In that case, we can ignore any changes to the electric field along this path and treat it essentially as a constant. So that means that we can take out the electric field from the integral. And we're left with the following integral, which is simply the difference of your limits of integration. So R plus dr at the top. Minus your lower limit of integration. Minus. The minus sign is superfluous to our application of a work done by an electric field. We'll include it for now, uh, but I'll explain the difference afterwards. Uh, sorry, this is minus R or lower bound. Okay, so. As a reminder, we treated E as approximately constant because R 
our difference in path is so small. Okay, so we, we're approximating E as not having changed appreciably over a range of integration. So what we're left with is our change in potential energy per unit charge, which was this difference. was equal to that. All right. So what we have then is we can divide both sides by dr and bring the negative sign over. And we're left with a quantity that looks like this. So this should start looking a lot like the definition of a derivative to you, but we have this weird division by a vector. In the next video, we're going to interpret what dividing by a vector like this means. And as you can expect, we're going to end up with a special kind of derivative.